um, the slide on uh, how to uh, open up a socket and uh, do an uh, interprocess communication IPC uh, using the tickle commands. Um, these are some of the commands on the IOs uh, and processes essentially. So using these commands actually you can run external command um, using tickle. Uh, so exec or exec is uh, one of the um, commands that can start a process. Um, we define the process and programs in the very first lecture if you remember. Um, and then the exec can also use uh, ampersand you know what this means this is basically to run the process in the background. So we can actually run the process in the background or in the foreground however it is. So to use that here is a typical example we set the favorite editor command to emacs and then we just say exec dollar favorite editor and then with an ampersand to run it in the background. And then um, yeah, for the file names actually like I mean you can use the glob command to um, expand the files instead of uh, just uh, giving the, the file name it's expansion itself. So here is an eval command of uh, exec and the exec is essentially like I mean um, it is a ls of glob star dot c. And you notice a couple of things. One is like I mean, this, this command is actually enclosed in um, the quotes, meaning during the interpreter time, uh, this itself, this uh, everything will be um, this command. Like for example, the globe command will be executed, and it will be expanded. So this is the uh, command substitution, therefore, and the star dot c will be expanded based on the globe dot c globe command and uh, so basically it will become ls the entire list uh, everything with dot c and so and then exec will actually print out that values and then um, we can also um, open pipes using uh, the open command um, for example if you want to pipe the command to um, grep uh, for the word foo in the bar dot tickle uh, with a uh, read only option, um, we can actually set this thing as an open uh, with an open command, and then the open command will pipe that uh, into that um, into the app. And then here, basically, like I mean, this only just um, um, until the end of the file, uh, basically, or end of the file, basically read the. Um, um, the dollar f. So this command essentially searches for the word foo in bar dot tickle. So uh, so that's the way to look at it basically. So this is uh, one other command. Um, then uh, there are some runtime information facilities um, basically. Um, for example, the during the command line arguments, arg c is the count and arg v0 is the interpreter name and uh, arg v is the list of arguments um, we will look at it this in more details as to how to set the various int interpreters um, so uh, this is one of the things basically so if we query the arg c that gives you the command and then the, the first uh, arg v is actually the interpreter name and then the remaining is the list of arguments. So and then you can also uh, query for the tickle tk version uh, the commands are the tickle version and tk version and then uh, it can pr print out numbers like 7.5 4.1 respectively. Then uh, there are platform specific information that you can query um, so one uh, such thing is basically the tk platform array that prints out a whole bunch of information uh, we can also query the OS information the machine platform and OS actually actually this prints out these various things and uh, in that order so it is the OS version what kind of machine it is what platform it is in and then what is the, the OS so so, um, so these are some of the other uh, commands and then there is also info command um, and info command can have additional variables. 
so info wars is one command info globals is another one um, info locals and then info exists these things can give you uh, information about the variable various uh, uh, variables that you are using for the program and then if you have defined the procedures and how you have defined the procedures those you can get it through this info procs info args info default info body and info commands um, then there is also a rename command uh, this is you can rename any command even the built in commands you can rename to another command um, and also then uh, because of uh, this rename you can actually replace any built in command with your own commands. Uh, so you can use like for example rm I mean basically one of the commands uh, for a, a different one. Then uh, there is an auto loading feature in uh, tickle um, when the command is does not exist usually an unknown is invoked um, and then uh, basically the auto loading actually loads tickle procedures on demand from libraries it uses the search path of the directories then we also have a load tickle command um, essentially this is a long awaited the standard interface for dynamic loading of uh, tickle commands from DLLs and dot SOS etc. So um, if you have a compiled uh, tickle scripts basically you can use load tickle to load it uh, at the runtime. Uh, interp Tickle command. This is a interp is another command basically, uh, which is you can create multiple independent tickle interpreters in a single process. Um, so and then there are also like options along with it. The dash safe option creates a safe tickle interpreter. Then the the version seven point six and four point two. Um, um, Basically, this is like uh, the, the main um, improvements over the previous versions. Are one is the the grid geometry manager has been revised, um, and then um, it is needed for spectacle code generator or the GUI builder. Uh, there is also CP, C API changes uh, for the channel drivers. Uh, this will eliminate the tickle file uh, usage. Uh, and then, as I mentioned, like the, here, the GUI stands for the graphical user interface. Um, and then there are a whole bunch of bug fixes that went into these releases. Uh, even though it says like beta, I think like this already released, and you should be able to find these uh, releases. And then uh, we talked about uh, some of the um, issues with Tickle. Um, so for example the in this command um, so some uh, the, these these ones we haven't covered much but assume that this is some command and then here is a command which has uh, puts std out dollar label with quotes um, and this quotes once we specify this quotes this may not work correctly because here the text label where we specify the dollar label and somewhere else we are specifying set label this label can have multiple words. So when we say like standard out with multiple words and since it is quotes as you know like I mean interpreter substitutes uh, the, the variable this is the variable substitution. So it can substitute into those multiple um, uh, words for example if it is label is my name then you have my space name. So now the puts command does not take those multiple words it needs to take only one word. So to fix that we can actually define it like this basically where we define this as a list with the command so that it executes as a list and then so each one is treated as a separate entity. So even if you have multiple words those words will be combined and treated as a single word. So that when you say like puts standard out that uh, particular word like say my name it uh, produces the correct output. And then we went through this, um, uh, this particular um, um, 
particular program in a lot of details. Um, so here is this program is mainly for sorting and um, one thing quickly we notice is basically it has um, the arguments as ARGS and we know that that stands for variable length. Arguments. So in this case actually it is basically it uh, takes in um, uh, a set of files and then basically it uh, um, sorts the files essentially um, or uh, the, the lines in the files essentially to see which which order it should be. So here um, we start the program by um, seeing like um, what is the number of arguments or number of files in the arguments. So essentially like we just do an L search of uh, of that arguments and um, that gives you like I mean how many files are there and if it is greater than 0 then we start processing the files. Um, so um, if it is greater than or equal to 0 then we say like set files. The, the range is um, um, the index minus one to the end, so we split that into like two 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 things basically. Um, so this is the IDX. So here this argument will have like some um, options plus the file names. Um, so the options we need to delineate those things and then only like sort the, the remaining ones. So that's why we are doing this basically, and then um, so the files are in the second part, and uh, the options are in the first part. So we detect that here. Um, and then we just say basically like uh, now um, um, if we don't know exactly like I mean how to match this uh, so here basically like all the arguments are starting with the, the dash so that is how we know that they are the, are the options essentially. Um, so now if you do not know then now we need to just guess so basically when we set the files and the options and then we just uh, go through each of the argument and see basically whether that belongs to an option or belongs to a uh, file. So we appropriately like um, increment one of them. Now once we know that then now we need to um, read the, the lines from the files. So we start reading the file basically we, and then if um, the length of the file itself is equal to 0 then we read it from the standard in if you want and then uh, otherwise for each of those files basically we see like if the string equal to um, dash then we, we actually like uh, close the file otherwise we open the file for read only and then set the close to one and then here we just start reading line by line until we end the in the file and then here is where we sort the lines and then uh, this is like uh, in place sorting um, and what we do is we set those uh, the, the lines essentially uh, which is um, this particular array here um, essentially like I mean we do this um, this command. So let's go through this uh, one by one. We do an eval. There's a list basically which converts the whatever the output into a list. Then we do an L sort, which is a list sort um, of the options. Um, and then basically we give a range um, and here basically like we convert the lines into the list um, and then um, essentially like I mean uh, lines initial lines is actually like uh, set to uh, nothing null. Um, 
so this this particular command actually it um, sorts the lines in place and basically um, it gives you the whole list as one i mean uh, all the lines as just one list and then we then go through the sorted lines and then just uh, print out those lines print out the lines so this command is fairly simple it's just a for each and then we just read the 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 um, list uh, lines line by line and then just put each line into the standard out so this is what we covered um, uh, so um, uh, last time um, now we will start some new thing basically um, i hope like i mean once you once you start understanding this particular program you will be okay to actually um, do the uh, any kind of uh, typical program and here i actually like mentioned that basically uh, if you look at um, the levels that will give you the good indication as to how this whole uh, sorting program works so i marked it as like 1 and then 2 and then list is l sort is uh, 3 and then um, we have this options uh, actually look here l range and then the the list and then the set lines so as you know like i mean it's all evaluated from inside one by one um, so um, so it, this is the nested command that gets um, executed and then here um, the range is zero to zero okay so now we will go to the next module uh, let me talk about that. So today we will be taking it uh, to the next level we will um, um, actually uh, review the um, um, you know, we will actually go through the uh, TK today um, actually so um, So um, TK uh, stands for um, toolkit. Uh, it's a very um, um, concise uh, or very precise um, term uh, because um, what uh, TK is uh, about is uh, nothing but just a toolkit um, for um, doing. Um, doing a graphical user interfaces with uh, tickle commands so that's what we will be um, we will talk about but before we go there um, I want to give you a quick uh, recap of uh, our previous um, um, lectures um, actually we started uh, learning about uh, tickle a couple of weeks ago um, we understood that actually tickle has like it's, it's a language that is really not a language but mostly for scripting um, so it is very easy to use and uh, not a big uh, um, heavy heavy weight uh, functionalities and um, typically um, tickle is just a set of commands which are separated by um, uh, new line characters or um, semicolons and each command is just words separated by white space 
and uh, the tickle interpreter itself does not put any kind of uh, restriction on this and it passes pretty much everything to the parser and uh, typically in the command structure is first word is function and then the others are arguments only the functions can apply meaning to the arguments so that is why like I mean the interpreter does not um, uh, put any kind of uh, restriction on the um, commands themselves and then passes the everything um, faithfully to the parser and then uh, it also allows you with single pass tokenizing and substitution um, so all the um, variables the commands themselves they are all like uh, substituted uh, at once. Um, but if you have like next nested command, the parser will send it back to the interpreter, and the interpreter may send it back to parser again um, in a recursive manner. And then uh, we also uh, learned about dollar being uh, the symbol for the variable substitution, and then the square brackets uh, will pass the uh, uh, command substitution. Any kind of quotes uh, prevents any um, substitution. Uh, uh, actually, like it prevents uh, the word break, but it allows all the substitution. But if you are using a braces, then the braces prevents all the substitution. We also learned about the escape characters, which is uh, backslash to escape specific characters, um, and uh, the key thing to note from all these things is that tickle has no grammar. Um, we also learned about uh, procedures and some of the special commands in tickle or various activities, uh, whether it is file IO, regular IO, or um, just executing a command, uh, things like that. We learned in the last lecture. So, today we are going to shift gears and focus more on. Um, TK, which is the toolkit. So, what is um, uh, TK? So, TK is a very efficient way to, and mostly like fun way, to build user interface or the graphical user interfaces with uh, Tickle. And then um, it has this three basic structures: the windows, widgets, and processes. We'll learn about these things. Um, and then we can create widgets uh, using class commands and then there are specific widget commands as well and uh, most of the geometry management is through these two commands uh, called placer and packer uh, the commands themselves are place and pack and then uh, we will learn about bindings uh, because the bindings are how we can map a particular button or uh, any kind of uh, graphical interface unit into uh, um, executable command and then there are other commands like send focus selection window manager and graphs couple of examples of commands essentially like show wars is one command and loop dialog is the other one So now let's look at uh, how uh, a TK application is organized. The TK application has a widget hierarchy. It still uses just one tickle interpreter and one process, um, but uh, you can have like more than one application in a given process. So what is a widget? So widget is nothing but a window with a particular look and feel and it is generated by uh, the TK and widget is again it is a class by itself um, and um, the classes are implemented by TK the, the particular classes that got him that gets implemented with TK are frame so a widget can have a frame can have a label you can have a button, you can have a check button, radio button, menu button, 
menu, message, entry, text, canvas, scroll bar, scale, list box and uh, top level. So again the widgets can be nested uh, for this because you have a top level um, widget that can that you can specify. So now let us look at the widget hierarchy. So at the top level it is uh, specified as just dot uh, that is uh, the, the topmost level for a widget and then under the, the dot as uh, three um, uh, things basically three objects uh, a list box so it is denoted as dot list box and then menu which has dot menu and then the scroll which is dot scroll. So in this uh, case essentially um, you can see that basically the this is all the top ones basically which is the list box and then here is the menu and here is the scroll those are the three main things essentially. So it's listed out here. So the widget basically it's the, the, this empty box as one. That's the list box. Then you have menu item, and then the scroll bar. So and then under the menu itself, um, we can have a menu file and a menu help. So you will see like how we can do these things basically. So those are file and so this entire thing becomes a menu. So now let's see how it works. So there are three types of windows, uh, as you can see here. One is the main window, which is this uh, whole thing, which is in red. You can have an internal window, um, which is scroll has its own window. As you can see, um, and then the menu help has its own window, and you click and open, and then a file will have its own window. Think of this way. Um, now, if you click something and then it opens a dialog, the dialog comes under the main window. Uh, so dot dialog that is that is what is also called as the top level uh, window and for this one actually there is a message which is essentially like this text here and then yes and uh, no so those are the only two, two more additional things for this. Now how do we create widgets each widget has a class it can be a button, it can be a list box, it can be a scroll bar, etc. And one class command for each class used to create the instance. So if you want to create a widget called dot a dot b, um, we need to use one of these commands either a button or a list box or a scroll bar, and then here we say like button space. Dollar, I mean dot a dot b, and then what is the text for that uh, button? Is quit, and then the command is actually exit. And then here is another one, uh, another widget which is a scroll bar, and then it has uh, the name is dot x, and then the orient is actually horizontal. So now you have three things that uh, you can use it to define one is the class name then the window name itself and then the configuration options. So each of the class has several configuration options. So here is uh, the class uh, here is the configuration option for buttons as a class. So you have active background, active foreground, anchor, background bitmap, um, border width, command, cursor. Uh, disable foreground, font, foreground, height, height background, height light color, height light thickness, image, justify, pad X, pad Y, relief, 
said take focus text text variable underline width and wrap length these are all most of the um, the buttons um, that are available the class for the, i mean the configuration options for buttons so it's not specified in a command um, the options are taken from an options database usually it's uh, the resource manager property or just loads it from the x default file so once you have the button defined um so um if any kind of um, um configuration option is not specified during the command line um it takes it from the resource manager property or uh, x defaults file um and then in this one you can also like use uh, set command to set it set an option um and then uh, we can actually query these options with uh, the option command itself if it is not in the option database the default is provided by its class so tickle command for each widget is named after the widget and um it's used to reconfigure and manipulate widgets so here let's see basically so um here we define a button um, dot a dot b and then um, we configure the dot a dot b with the release as sunken and then um, dot a dot b is slash um, then we also define a scroll bar um, and we set the the width and the height and then uh, we also you know get those numbers essentially so these are all um we can um, try to reconfigure this uh, uh, widget and then we can also delete a widget uh, when the particular widget is destroyed it automatically is deleted as well so the key principle with the uh, widget is all states should be readable modifiable at any time so the other one is um, how can i get any option from any widget at any time so when we give the um the widget name uh, so here this is dot my button and configure minus foreground then it it gives you the foreground as foreground and the foreground foreground blue blue so this is the thing and here if you give just my button configure then it gives you the all the um, items in that widget that is um, active background is what is that the background or is the um, active foreground the, what is the anchor what is the background and then um, what is uh, the border width and the background the whole thing basically that uh, you get now how do we manage the geometries of these uh, widgets um, one key principle is widgets don't control their own position or even sizes only the geometry manager can do that and uh, widgets don't even appear on the screen until it is uh, getting managed by the geometry manager and then the geometry manager is essentially it's an algorithm for arranging slave windows relative to the master windows so here on the right hand side there is a picture uh, showing how it works um 
so we get the parameters from the applications designer into the geometry manager we also um, get the requested size of the slave uh, size from the slave and then we also know the geometry of the master from looking at the um, the window now the geometry manager provides the size and the location for the slave and then it also like uh, provides the requested size for the master we talked about uh, the placer as being one of the classes essentially um so here the placer is actually it's, it's a very um, simple not a very powerful tool um and it is not described in the text essentially so only thing to notice is basically like each slave buttons or any kind of uh, objects will be placed relative to the its master for example if you say like um, we create a button called x within this um, scope of this window and we say basically like button um, dot x x is x and then place with respect to dot x basically x coordinate at y uh, x coordinate at 0 and y coordinate at 0 so it puts it at the top of the uh, this window now we can move this window to the middle or towards some other another place here just by issuing another place command so again we place the dot dot x now at the x direction it is 1 centimeter and then relative y is basically 0.5 so on the y you just move it by 0.5 so that uh, it's only like related to the previous value, and then uh, on the x direction, it's uh, uh, sorry, in the y direction, it's 0 0.5 here, and 0.5 centimeter. On the y direction, it's just uh, one centimeter, and then with an anchor as uh, w. So these are some of the coolest thing that you can do. Um, another one is essentially now the relative x is actually 0.5 and relative y is 0.5 but the height is enclosed in increased to 2 centimeters. So now we have this kind of thing and then the anchor is at the center on this words. So in this example actually we place it um, with the relative y of uh, I mean relative x of 0 relative y is 0 0.5 uh, so that is the center um, the same. and then uh, relative height is 0 0.5 as well so it adds up those things and then the relative width is 0 0.5 so you get a widget looking like this. But uh, in today's design, we use what is called a packer or a dot or a pack command. Um, this pack is more powerful than the placer. It arranges the group, groups of slaves together. Uh, that forms the packing list. The packs slaves around the uh, and it also packs the slaves around the edge of the master's cavity. So the way to place is essentially like you pick the side of the cavity slice off the parcel for slave so this is gone and then optionally grow the slave to fill the parcel so so you can actually increase it this and then fill it up as well and then finally like save the uh, position the slave in the parcel where to put the position and where to put the slave in inside the parcel Another thing is like how do you choose sites with Packer? So in fact, Packer with Packer it will become much easier because now you can say like uh, so. In this example, we have defined three buttons: OK, Cancel, and Help. And then we just issue one command to pack everything from left to right. 
so um okay cancel and uh, help goes from uh, go to the side left sorry it's not left to right but it's um towards the the left now we can um, reconfigure um, the cancel button uh, this time we are going to configure the text as cancel command so basically just one command and it will do it for you and then the other thing is uh, to uh, place these buttons uh, one on top of each other for that we just change the option from side left or to the side top now we can also put paddings on either side of um, any command so here we say like i mean for all the commands um, we do an left padding uh, x of uh, 2 mm and then y padding uh, distance of 1 mm so it achieves that way and then um, we can also like um, increase or decrease the pad uh, padding length and padding width now in this example actually um, you are doing some additional padding um, using the ipad x and ipad y um which are the internal padding essentially so internal padding is um, 1 millimeter and 2 millimeter 1 millim uh, 2 millimeter on x and 1 on y and then outside also is 2 millimeter and 1 millimeter so final output of the command will be something like this because it needs a bigger uh, wider area So one other thing is um, often times we need to fill a button or fill a particular widget with the button so um, for that we use this uh, fill command so as you can see here um, when we define without the fill command you can see that it leaves this white space here because this command is so long. So now with fill X what happens is uh, basically the each and every button is uh, increased in its uh, size to match the widget itself. So here is another example where we specify the pack menu is uh, top side side top so there is this menu comes up here and then the, we also coded a scroll bar as you can see it is a tiny scroll bar here and then uh, we coded a list box essentially um, which is here no actually this is the menu so the list box is here. So the menu is here, the top right scroll bar is here and then this is here list box. So oftentimes what we want is uh, this, this actually looks very ugly and uh, it is not like really pleasing. So in order to make those kind of changes we use fill X and fill Y. So here we say like so menu side top fill X. So originally like file was here but since we say fill X it actually moves to the front of the line so here um, is the is the file and then this button itself is extended all the way front. Uh, so that is fill X and then the scroll bar we want to fill it fill the Y direction so we put this uh, thing here so that it is basically it is top to bottom the, the scroll bar. And then we can have our uh, little list box uh, which is here. So 
so now we come to the expansion uh, so how do we expand the thing basically so we increase the partial size to absorb the extra space in the master So this is something that we saw already. Like um, we have these three dot ok dot cancel and dot help that we pack towards the left side essentially. Now we say the ok and cancel we need to pack it to the left side, but um, the ok and cancel and then the help can itself be pushed to the other side, and then basically like. Um, we say that here pack the dot help the side is left and then the expand is true so that way we can actually um, have some control but now if you do a um, expand true filler x that will fill up all the space with the um, the button itself so here we can see basically that once we say Ok cancel set the help side left so that is very similar to this and then we say uh, dash expand true fill x so if uh, the x axis is true then it basically fills out the whole button so that is the difference between the expand and expand fill. So now with if we say like expand equal to true then it puts those buttons far away they still look okay only thing is like I mean there are all these white spaces here and here and here and here. so we can issue the command with um, expand as one and fill as both so that means that it can it is going to do the filling on either side um, and um, so here on the same token basically like since they are this is part using expand now the expand is one and then fill is both so it actually extends uh, on either side. So. Um, here is some more uh, packing. Um, so, if you want to create like more complex arrangements, it's always better to use additional frames. So, here is one example: the frame left. Um, so, here we we call this frame as um, uh, dot left. And then, what does dot then left have? Um, basically we pack the dot left side towards the side left and uh, x is 3, uh, 3 millimeter and y is uh, 3 millimeter and then we decide to put a frame on the right hand side a frame called dot right and then the dot right um, is essentially like I mean we uh, put it at the right and then with a padding of uh, 3 millimeter and uh, y of uh, 3 millimeter and then uh, we also have these uh, radio buttons which is we are just generating one by one and then here essentially like uh, it has um, the variable points variable size and then the text so the size will be taken for the packing. So here is one example. So we have like all these machines PTS8, PTS10, PTS12, PTS18, and PTS24. So we can just say basically pack everything in the left side with the, the top anchored 
at uh, called W. Then we can have uh, various buttons to check basically um, dot bold is basically like the text is bold and the variable is bold dot italic is the text is italic and then uh, variable is italic and then uh, here check button underline and text underline variable underline. So for the text basically like in this underline uh, check button has these text and then you can also say like dot bold dot italic and dot under, under undermine um, in the pack in the same pack. So here basically like these are the main formats and then uh, um, input is dot write and then uh, output is uh, anchor w. So today um, we will uh, also like learn about this connections and uh, probably like stop at that point uh, I think like we will continue with one point in the next class. So the connections essentially like I mean so the questions are how to make widgets work together with an application and other widgets. So this is the whole purpose of the tickle so we, we put the tickle commands and then it should work there. And uh, the widget actions are ticket commands. For example, the button a dot b uh, dash command command exit. The button release is kept there, and then every time you press, basically the program just exits. And widgets use ticket commands in order to communicate with each other. Um, so here is an example: scroll bar s. Depend as a scroll bar. Command is text dot y view. Um, also um, the applications themselves use widget commands to com uh, communicate uh, between the widgets. So that is pretty much uh, for today, um, so as a review what we did was um, we started looking at uh, TK today, which is the toolkit that goes hand in hand with uh, Tickle. Um, we looked at the main um, uh, data structure or uh, in uh, Tickle in in TK, um, which is uh, nothing but uh, generating widgets. So this is another thing that we saw basically like. The, um, Tickle is nothing but um, um, the whole bunch of uh, widget commands, and then you need to create the widget and using the class command, uh, and then do some geometry management, and then finally binding bind the uh, the, uh, the user interface to the a particular um, command, um, and then there are other commands very similar to the uh, the class commands send focus selection window etc. So this is something that we saw today. Um, then we also like went into detail about um, the widget hierarchy as to what different flavors are there. So at the top level basically it is the dot and then uh, after the dot it is um, After the dot, it um, goes through the various other commands here. Then we also looked at the creating widgets, how to create a widget, and then um, some of the options for the, the command. Uh, we use some of these options in our program. Then um, we went into like the widget commands themselves.
and finally we started looking at laser and the packer mainly the packer which is the, the most versatile command in uh, TK. So here we looked at the various ways of uh, arranging the widgets using the packer commands and also like uh, make it more um, uh, easy to look at. And then finally um, we looked at the connections and uh, yeah mainly the connections so um, how to make uh, the other tickle scripts work together um, as one unit so there are many ways of doing it basically like they can communicate to one another using a tickle they can communicate uh, or use widget commands to communicate with widgets. And then uh, basically, like widget actions, uh, uh, how how they relate to the tickle commands. So I think that's pretty much uh, covers uh, this lecture. Um, we will take it up uh, in the next uh, lecture. Thank you.